Well, hey, folks, I'm Flip Put Off. I'm the outdoors reporter at the Northwest Arkansas Democrat Gazette. And uh, also, I work on the photography staff. I'm a staff photographer there just doing regular news and sports assignments. And, well, you know, the this is the 50th anniversary of the Buffalo National River. Uh, it's just a real jewel that we have right here in our backyard and so lucky that it's so close for us because you go down there and you see license plates from all over the United States there. <clears throat> but I'm on, I'm on kind of a mission this, this spring uh, because I took a float trip of the, of the entire Buffalo River starting at Ponca, went 106 miles or 126 miles uh, to the White River, all in all in one trip, and I'd done I'd done all the Buffalo before, but I'd never had ever done it all in one single trip, and uh, a couple guys had just finished doing it, and back in 2009 when I did my trip, and uh, so they were telling me about their trip and how, what a great time they had and everything, and and uh, I never really dawned on me to do it, but I thought, wow, man, I'm going to do that, so. Three weeks later, I was on the Buffalo River paddling 126 miles downstream. And I, I went by myself and I was kind of nervous at first because uh, I had to average 20 miles a day. And I'd never had to ever d done that canoeing on an Ozark stream. Usually we'll fish in and stuff and don't go very far. So I didn't know, you know, I was kind of uneasy about it. So. The first trip, the first day, you know, I put it in at Ponca. And uh, so I'm paddling and, and uh, the water's kind of low and I'm, I'm uh, going downstream. And well, lo and behold, at the end of the day, I, I found myself about two miles downstream from the Pruitt Access. So I've done 28 miles that first day. So I really felt a lot better. Um, and when I started, the river was kind of low and it was raining and it was Memorial Day even. So we're at the Ponca Bridge, which usually on Memorial Day would just be real crowded, but there was nobody there. And uh, so I went ahead and put, put in and it's kind of a weird feeling when your uh, buddy who dropped me off, the guy dropped me off and uh, I'll tell you a little bit about that. But so he drops me off and he says, OK, see ya. And I'm sitting there all by myself, looking downstream, going, "I've got 126 miles to go." But it was it was really exciting. And a long long story short, uh, when I got when I got finished, uh, I knew I'd have fun and I knew I'd enjoy it. But it, it just turned out to be the, one of the most enjoyable trips I've ever had in my whole life. And it was it was just it, it was kind of spiritual in a way. And uh, it was. It was just way more than I thought it would ever be. And it was kind of life changing a little bit because after that, it went so well that I went ahead and, and did what I call whole river floats, where you put in as far upstream as is practical for floating, and then you go float the whole river. So at the Buffalo went so well that I went ahead and did the whole Kings River a couple of years later. And then I went over to uh, Southeast Missouri and I did all, all of the current river and I wanted to do the whole current river. Current's but pretty. yeah, it really is. But there's more there's more river than I had time. I had a I could, had a week. So I did all of the current river that lies within the Ozarks. Mm -hmm. And it was about 100 125 miles and man it was just another, another uh, really great float. So I'm kind of hoping that if people hear about my trip then it'll kind of maybe give them the idea that hey man maybe maybe I'd like to do that. So uh, bas basically that's 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 kind of how it went. Um, and I thought I'd talk about some essential items that are that are pretty pretty important for a trip that's unique uh, on the, on the Buffalo for a week. So obviously there's the there's the essential things that you would take on any camping trip like rain gear, you know. Well, for the Buffalo, um, the one really essential thing that you, that I think is you should take is at least an, one extra paddle, because if, if you lose your paddle or it breaks, then you're up a creek without one. So uh, that's really important. Another thing is, you know, the people that like to go in caves, they always take three sources of, of light with them. 
Well, I think on a, a week on the Buffalo, you need to have three sources of fire, maybe three, three lighters. Like I, I carry, I carry two uh, lighters and I've also got some waterproof matches. So if you lose your lighter, you know, you got extra ones and it's just kind of all about, all about being prepared. And another essential item I think to have is some charcoal lighter mm -hmm. because, you know, camping, half of camping is having a campfire. And if you got some charcoal lighter, it's like instant campfire. Or if you want to test your woodsmanship skills and make a fire with just one match, you can do that. But if it's been raining all day and the wood's all wet, uh, you can still have a fire if you, if you got some, some charcoal lighter with you. And um, I think it's, it's essential for me anyway is to have a, a lawn chair, a nice comfortable chair to relax in and camp. Back in my younger days, we used to sit like just sit on an ice chest or something. But it's a lot nicer to, to have, a, you know, a nice chair to relax, relax by the campfire. And um, so anyway, about, about the Buffalo National River, what I think is, is really neat about doing the whole river is it's something that anybody can do that has just basic canoeing skills, basic camping skills. You don't have to be a, you know, just crazy, crazy uh, experienced camper or paddler. Because the Buffalo is, is, it's a pretty mild river. The first about 15 miles from Ponca to Kyle's Landing is a little bit challenging. It's pr probably the, what you would might call the roughest, fastest part of the river. But after Kyle's Landing, the river, the Buffalo comes out of the Boston Mountain Range and goes into the Springfield Plateau. So it kind of widens out and gets a little slower and a little, a little more tame. Um, and it's, it's just so pretty, just every inch of it, you know? I mean, you know, the, the big bluffs and the clear water. And uh, on, on my trip, you know, it was raining when I left, when I left Ponca and it was rainy, cool and foggy all day. And uh, so we had some rain and, but then right before I made camp the first night, I came to the, where the little Buffalo pours into the, the main Buffalo and uh, they must've had a bigger rain event upstream because the little Buffalo was just pouring into the river. And uh, after that, man, I had high water wasn't flood, but it was high water and it was moving on. So I had no, I had no trouble doing that, doing that uh, 20 miles a day. In fact, a couple of days I did 30 and I wasn't, I didn't try hard, you know, I mean, I'm paddling, you know, but just, uh, you know, at a nice moderate pace and not pushing it or anything, but that, that nice current was really, really nice. So you want to show some pictures from my trip there? brought a few along. This is right right after I started. This is Roark Bluff by Steel Creek. This is probably about two miles downstream from Ponca. But you can see it's kind of foggy and misty and rainy and and uh, it's probably why I didn't see anybody that, that first day. But, you know, those are just the beautiful, beautiful bluffs on the river. So then you can see that you can see that uh, spending a week on the Buffalo is pretty rough, <laughs> pretty rough way to go. But if you can, if you've got a week, a week's vacation, or you can carve a week out of your busy retirement schedule. And, and uh, it's just a, a fabulous vacation. If you like to, if you like to float and you like to camp, man, it's just the ultimate Buffalo river experience. So you can kind of see how everything fits in, in my canoe there. Everything fits real nice. I've got an ice chest there and, and uh, all, all the gear just fits real nice. And I, I went by myself, paddled solo, because that's, that's just kind of the way I wanted to do it. You know, I really, really uh, enjoy the solitude. Nice. Okay, you can see the river's pretty high. Not really flood, but you can see it, that it's back in the in the trees there, and uh, these are I didn't see really hardly any anybody the whole week, but I saw these these guys and uh, this this little group that I ran into is a father, 
there were there were probably three dads and their and their sons. Each one had had one of their sons with them. And they're from Houma, Louisiana. They had never been on a canoe trip in their entire lives, and they decided to come up and they're doing the whole buffalo just like me. And they had never been canoeing before in their life. And I'm talking about it. Said, well, you know, all we did at first was we just tipped over. But now that we got the hang of it, we're having a real good time. <laughs> they were real Cajun, let me tell you. They were, but I really enjoyed them. But you can, anyway, there they are, and you can, uh, you can see. One thing I like to tell people about packing, um, you know, they they got two in a canoe there, so you, they kind of had to get their gear up high. But the higher up above the the uh, gunnel of the canoe your gear is the more top heavy your boat is and it's going to be more tippy but uh but anyway I, I just enjoyed them so much and it was really neat to see uh their dads out with their kids on a on a big adventure like that okay uh camping on the gravel bar man i mean you just can't you just can't get any it doesn't get any better um the it, and on the Buffalo, I mean, like every 10 or 15 minutes, you pass these beautiful gravel bars that are just the best uh, campsites that, that, that you could ever ask for. And the gravel is really nice because it's a lot of rivers have sand banks and you camp, you camp on that sandy bank and the sand gets all, all over everything. But here on the, on the Buffalo and our other, other Ozark streams, the gravel is, you know, just nice and clean and, uh, and, uh, when you float the whole buffalo, you're going to have probably a minimum of five nights of really nice gravel bar camping. And so you got your nice campfire. And then at night, if the sky's clear, the stars are just incredible. So, man, I mean, there, there's just so much about it. That no light pollution. There's just another one. This is one of, really one of my favorite ones. Um, I just, you know, had that bluff there and there's a, I like to camp where there's some rushing water. So that, cause I like to hear that water, you know, man, I like to hear that sound of that flow. Um, and the more, the farther I went, the better I liked it. And downstream of ways, I started seeing some more people and these guys had a little mishap. And I like, it, it kind of looks like that guy on the left is playing the banjo. <laughs> Kind of like deliverance, you know. But uh, anyway, you can see again the river is just kind of high, and there's somebody else had a had, had a campsite right there. So now we're getting getting down towards the end, towards the, pretty close to the White River. That's just another real, real pretty bluff, almost toward the end of the trip. So anyway, those are probably the those are the the photos that I'm that I brought. Um, so what what should people know about the river? Well, like we were talking about from from Ponca to Kyle's Landing, it's it's probably the roughest part and then it gets real smooth. And uh, when you when you get towards the towards the end, you go past uh, access called Rush. And this is the wildest, most remote part of the river from Rush down to the White River. It's about 25 miles with no access at all. So you're just in the lower Buffalo National River wilderness area. And uh, by now, I was I was way ahead of schedule. And Rush, uh, just, just up the road from the canoe access is a, a ghost town. It used to be a, real mi a mining town. And I looked, uh, went up there and looked around. I'd seen it before, but I was just trying to slow down now. Um, so anyway, from, from Rush down to the White River is another, another 25 miles. And uh, so there's one, there's, there's one little thing about when you get to the White River. Um, you know, the, the White River, where it comes out of Bull Shoals Dam. And if, if they're running eight generators at the dam, the river is real high and real swift. And the takeout 
uh, at Buffalo City on the White River where, where most people take out, you have to paddle upstream. It's about a half a mile to a mile up to the takeout area there. Well, if they're running eight generators, uh, man, you're not going to be able to get up there. And uh, what I've heard people do is they just stay there at the confluence and that White River is big time trout fishing water and there's all kinds of gut motor boats running up and down. Well, you kind of hitchhike a ride and you hang onto the side of their boat and, and if they're nice folks, they'll take you up to the, to the takeout. But I've taken out at Buffalo City a, a, many number of times and I've never had that happen. I've always been able to, to get up there. Uh, so that's just something to keep in mind. And uh, another thing about, you know, about floating for a week on the buffalo is the beauty of it is you really only have you don't have to take m much more stuff for seven days on the river than you do for like an overnight because you got your camping gear that you're going to use every night and all your sleeping stuff um really the only thing you got to take is, is like more food so what worked for me and everybody's got their own way of doing things but before i left Oh, I, I like barbecue ribs a lot. So I got some barbecue ribs and, and wrapped them up good. And I made some spaghetti. And uh, so I had a lot, I was, you can pretty much eat on the river, just what you eat at home. So I, I had, I had that stuff and uh, it, it kept really good in my, in my ice chest, but I didn't use like bags of ice. What I like to do is get a gallon milk jug mm -hmm fill it up with water, freeze it, set it in the middle of your uh, cooler, and then you can put all your food around it. And that lasts a pretty darn long time. Another thing about that is your, uh, your, your, your food's not sitting in a big puddle of water like it would be if you used bags of ice. Mm -hmm. and another, another thing is when, you, when you're going downstream and that, that that ice is slowly melting. It makes really good ice water for you to drink. Um, so I had I had some non-perishable food, and uh, I did I didn't really eat that until like maybe maybe my third night on the river. Uh, and then I started eating not the the non-perishable stuff. Um, you know, like these packages of uh, like Lipton's uh, pasta Alfredo and. Spanish rice and stuff. All you do is you just boil it in some water, and those foil packs of chicken and tuna, they're they're real good to take. Uh, you stir all that together, and whatever else you want to stir in there with it, it makes it makes a real nice uh, one pot dinner. Mm -hmm. Another thing for breakfast, uh, I made I made up some uh, breakfast burritos, and I froze those. So I had breakfast burritos and, and all this stuff, like the ribs and spaghetti, you just heat it up on the campfire or, you know, I got a little backpacker stove. You could, you could do that. Um, uh, you might want to take some milk, you know, for I oatmeal, because I like to get going in the morning. So I might maybe just have some oatmeal, but I, t I took soy milk because soy milk keeps really good. It keeps a way better than dairy milk. And it tastes pretty darn good. And uh, so I, I, that's another kind of a good little tip there. And um, uh, so you're, you're just kind of eating good in the neighborhood and then having a good time and uh, sleeping. I like to, I like to use an air mattress, like a Coleman air bed. Um, the thing about that is, you know, I mean, it's so comfortable. I'll just, that's just the way, I, the way I like to go. But you want to take two air mattresses because if you happen to spring a leak, and that's only happened to me one time in decades of using an air mattress, then you'll have a spare. Another thing about an air mattress is you got to take a pump, like an electric battery operated pump. And uh, before you leave, you want to make sure you put fresh batteries in it. Um, but if you're comfortable using a sleeping pad, you know, most people are going to do this, have been camping before and they know what's, what's comfortable. And if you could take like a thermal rest pad, mm -hmm. then you don't have to take the pump and, and the extra air mattress and all that stuff. But 
but uh, I, I just been using that air mattress. Um, but but uh, basically, that's really about in, kind of in the Cliff Notes version of the trip. And uh, I guess the main point I want to want to emphasize is that, that it's something that almost anybody can do, um, and it's so close. Like you and me could leave here. 90 minutes we'll be down to Ponca. Um, so what kind of risks are involved in this, you know? About everything you do has some kind of risk, you know, even driving home from work or whatever. Well, on the Buffalo or, or any Ozark stream or any river, um, you could you could have a flood event. Mm -hmm. And I've had it tw happen to me twice on the Buffalo. And in the unlikely event that that would ever happen, the main thing, so remember, just stay in the middle of the river and they're gonna have some debris and stuff around you. But if you stay right in the middle of the river and just keep going, you can you can make your way downstream until you find a safe place where you can get out. But it's it's probably un unlikely. Um, like on, on my trip in 2009, you know, it, it was just perfect. I had, I had every kind of weather you could ever imagine foggy and misty and rainy uh and then blazing hot sun and then uh, i had one thunderstorm morning where i had to go sit in the woods for about 20 minutes until the lightning quit but uh but o overall it was it was just uh, incredible and uh a, cu a couple of things that you might want to read or before you go or kind of get you ready to go there's this dr neil compton's book battle for the buffalo I think I got this right when it first came out and Dr. Compton, he signed it for me and wrote a real nice, nice. note to me in here. Uh, I was real, real lucky to be able to go floating one uh, on a float trip with Dr. Compton and went hiking with him a couple of times. Um, so anyway, this book is all about how the, the big fight in the 60s to save the buffalo and make it a Buffalo National River. It's a real detailed book and really good to read. And, I don't have a copy of the Buffalo River Handbook here with me, but Ken Smith, who has an exhibit here, mm -hmm. um, he wrote the Buffalo River Handbook and it's just got all kinds of information in it. And it kind of has almost like a mile by mile description of the river as you're going down the stream. And it kind of helps you tell where you are um, and how many miles that you've done. Uh, so that's a real good one. And then just for general uh, floating, pleasure up in Missouri there's all kinds of pretty streams that float up there and this is a good a good book to get from the Missouri Department of Conservation Paddler's Guide to Missouri it's, it's got all the Ozark streams in it and even the ones that are close to here like the Elk River uh, Flat Creek uh, Big Sugar got all those in there um, I'm I like big water too like I love the Missouri River and it's big and fast and it, there's a map of all the all the missouri river that goes all through missouri is in there and uh so there's big water and, and small water so so that's that's in a nutshell and i just i just hope that people take advantage of this and and i wanted to make sure to mention that the the golden window of opportunity to float the entire buffalo is in April and May okay. because that's when you're going to have the, the best chance of having good water level. Um, after Memorial Day, the upper part of the river starts to get lower and and uh, you're not going to be able to, to do that upper part unless we've had uh, rain in the summertime. So April and May, you can, and now it's Mar it's St. Patrick's Day almost okay. and so that gives you time to plan and get ready to go. What was your favorite part of the trip? Favorite section of the river, maybe? Man, that, that, that's a tough one. Um, I guess the last 25 miles are, are uh, real, real pretty. And, but I, I mean, the whole thing, the whole the whole buffalo is just really incredible but that last 25 miles is is neat and another thing that was that i really liked about it is because i could kind of smell the end and, and I, yeah. I knew that i was going to accomplish my trip and, 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 and that i was going to be able to make it okay um just one other little thing uh 
you might want to get some ice when you're on the river, you know, might want to get some ice. There's two places to get ice. There's the little town of Gilbert, which is the only town that's right on the river. And you can stop there and go up to the Gilbert store and you can buy ice there. When you get to, that's about halfway, mm -hmm. a little over halfway, Gilbert is. And then you get to, you go farther on down a couple of days later and you come to Buffalo Point. And it's, that's about the 100 mile mark. And you can walk up the hill. It's a pretty steep walk up there to their little store, but you can get some ice there. So if if ice is what you, you want to get some ice, why you can get some ice. Right. So was your friend there when you were ready to get picked up? Or did yeah, you have to wait on that, him? That's another thing I should, I should have mentioned right from the best. My best one of my, my best buddy, Tom Murray. Um, he I went over to his house with my canoe and all my gear ready to go and picked him up and we went to Ponca and he dropped me off and said, see you later. Uh, then he took my truck back to his house and I, I got so far ahead of schedule that I knew I was, I, I was going to be done in five and a half days instead of six and a half. So when I got to Buffalo Point, I, I went up to get some ice and I was able to use my cell phone because on the Buffalo self-service is, is real spotty. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even count on it. But I, was, I called Tom and, and I had him pick me up a day early. So, so he picked me up there and, you know, he was really instrumental in, in helping me do this trip. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll do the same thing for him if, if he wants to float the river float too. The river. Yeah. Anything else? Um, so how many times have you floated it in its entirety? That was the only time that I've done it from, from uh, Ponca to the White River. White river. And I don't know if I'll ever, if, if I'll ever do it again. Because that trip was so good that if I didn't have that high water level, you know, I mean, it, 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 yeah, it, might, it just might not be as good. I'm sure it would be fabulous. But what I've done, you know, like after I did the whole Buffalo, I, I love that so much that I, I went the next whole river I did was the Kings and that went so well, yeah. too. And then that was I'm thinking, man, I'm loving this whole river. Uh, deal. Mm -hmm. So that's when I went up the next trip and did the current river. And uh, so those are the three whole river trips that I've done. And and uh, there, there's another one, the 11 point up in Missouri that that I might like to do a whole river trip on that. that was a long one. Yeah. Very cool. Well, thank you so much for doing this today. Cliff. Enjoyed it. Um, thank you, Rachel. Really appreciate you doing this. And it was great. Um, and Anybody, anybody out there, if I can help you with any anything, uh, shoot me an email, fputoff at nwadg.com. And got any questions or anything I can help you with, I'd be more than happy to hear from you. Awesome. Thank you very much, sir.